Well, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everybody. Achwatha, Achwatha, Miyopri. So, what I just said from the, the land of the fatherland, the forefathers, I bring you peace and love and fraternity. I hope this leave love and part, uh, peace that I have seen in the last 24 hours, that I have been extremely impressed by what I have seen from a community who have been living away from its land and land of their forefathers, as it was mentioned, the indigenous people. And for whatever reason, at various stages in their lives, they have been obliged to leave their homes and to come and settle in the United States. The United States has been very kind to them, but they have also contributed to the development of this region socially, economically, and politically. So I would like to congratulate your community, and I hope that you also contribute to some of the positive contributions that you have made to the United States. You can also make it to your uh, homes and your relatives and your brethren back home in Kurdistan and Iraq. Well, and the background that we have come from to what we have achieved today, um, I think it, it can be, um, it should be respected, but it can be improved. And we should not be content with just what we have now. We should try to aim for higher and higher. With that, we can be successful together as different communities, different religions, Muslim, Yazidis, Christians, Sabia, uh, Zoroastrians, uh, Baha'is, all of those communities who live together. and. We have made certain progress in the fields of um, trying to introduce religious <coughs> studies to the education system rather than just Islamic studies. And uh, mother tongue ed education um, of all the um, ethnic groups who live there, they have the right of mother tongue education in their own language. And I do hope that we can improve this further. We are always open to new ideas, and new ideas can be developed when you look at things more objectively from a distance. There, we <coughs> probably sometimes get busy with nitty-gritty, with small things, details, and probably uh, miss the wider picture. But I think for people like you, living far, far away, and looking at the situation more objectively, you can also provide us with new ideas, complementary ideas, to improve our situation and to further um, strengthen our uh, coexistence of different communities. All I can say, finally, thank you very much for your kind reception. Thank you very much for all of you being here. Some of, the, some of you, I know that you've come from quite a distance across the border in Canada. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege for me to be here, and I'm looking forward to, already, to my next visit here. Thank you very much. To work in so my first question is about, what are your plans for protecting historical sites as far as security measures or plans for renovation? One by one, or? Yeah. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah. Okay, so we don't need a mic, do we? You're good? No, we don't. We can't have a mic. Okay. All right, looks like we need a mic. Okay. So, do you want me to? I think you're fine. Please, repeat what I said before the beginning. Can you do that? For all people to do it. Okay. Thank Everybody knows that that part of the world is rich in history. If the phrase is correct, I can say it's a junkyard of history. The fact that it's, it's littered with sites, historical sites, ancient sites, a lot of heritage. And that's what's so rich 
I mean, that's where uh, the importance of that region is. I mean, to Chris, for example. It's amazing what, what, what you can see there. And there's so many other areas that are not actually being explored and it has not been identified. Um, if I'm not uh, mistaken, there are believed to be over 3,600 sites that are still not being properly searched and um, exposed, so to speak. Um, we have uh, been working with uh, a number of international organizations and uh, there is a center of antiquities uh, I think it is sponsored by an organization from the United States um, they are based in Erbil they are providing training for the local uh, people as well as uh, those coming from Baghdad for antiquities and efforts are being made a few sites have been identified and the Italians, Czechs and other nations or let's say experts from those countries are actually working on them but I think we need to do much more than that um, the region has a huge potential it can be a, a very successful place for tourists and for those who are interested in antiquities um, we are at the very beginning of it because of the past instability in throughout um, last 50, 60 years, I would say, um, that part of the world deliberately was ignored by the central authorities. And it's only now that we are beginning to look into um, this particular area, which is uh, a very, very important one. I agree with you. And if you have any suggestions or any ideas, we will be more than welcome to listen. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, sabah al khair, uh, Adam Beek, uh, Hadrat. كاكا سيفان اسمي قيس ساكو من غارة الكردانية العالمية وصديق قديم لشعب الكرد بدأ نقول من خلال مداخلتك مستقبل الشعب الكردي حقيقة مرتبط مع قضية بناء أو انتصار الديمقراطية في العراق ما ظلت بجزء من هذا الوطن التجربة أثبتت بدون دولة مدنية عراقية وممكن يمكن من الشعب العراقي أن يحقق تطلعاته وأهدافه لذلك أنا عاتب حقيقة من حرصي من حبي لشعب الكردي وشعب العراقي إداء القيادة الكردية كان خجول وضعيف في دعم دولة مدنية في العراق كان تبقى مجال جدا كبير لو حاسبيها حساب صحيح اليوم كان العراق في موقع آخر فلذلك المراهنة على قضية المحاصصة الطائفية ستحقق حقوق الشعب الكردي أو المراهنة على العامل الخارجي سوف يبني دولة كردية أعتقد اليوم أنتم بحاجة لتقييم لإعادة تقييم واليوم هي تجربة أثبتت العامل الخارجي ترك كوباني وصار ضدها اليوم قضية حقوق الشعب الكردي أنا برأيي مرتبطة بقضية دولة مدنية علمانية في العراق اليوم ما ممكن تتحقق أي حقوق تحت, تحت ظل دولة إسلام سياسي نتمنى حقيقة هل حراك موجود في العراق أن القيادة الكردية لا تكون المتفرج وسوف تنعكس عليها سياسية أن يكون عدد دور هذا الدور مطلوب وإلا حتى الشعب الكردي سوف يقف موقف آخر تجاه قيادة الكردية ومنيتي أن أرى دور آخر من القيادة الكردية لدعم حضية المقاضية في العراق وسوف تحرق المشاكل شكرا شكرا أخي العزيز إذا يلا مي أو كنتينيو إن إنجليش أعتقد أن Probably I will bore you with some details, but uh, I think it is necessary because the question you raised regarding democracy in Iraq and uh, civil society, um, I think it is a very important <coughs> issue. And if you look at the Kurdish movement in Iraq, um, it has always tried to promote democracy. And one of the main slogans of the Kurdish movement since 1961 was democracy for Iraq and autonomy for Kurdistan. So I agree with you, when there is no democracy, 
the rest becomes irrelevant. And 1991, after the first Gulf War, when uh, Kurdistan was almost semi-independent because there was no central authority from Baghdad in that region, even <coughs> we, we were using a different currency until 2003. And just before 2003, uh, when our friends in Washington convince both the uh, leaders, the late General, uh, General Talavani and Masoud Barzani, that United States is for regime change, can you help? They said, well, we will help, but we have conditions. Iraq has to be a liberal, democratic, fertile system. And that uh, was accepted in principle. And it led to the conference of uh, December 2002 in London, where most of the opposition groups actually gathered there and the idea of federalism and democracy uh, was uh, accepted and it, it became uh, a strong part of the new constitution. Now, I'm being very frank here, uh, when uh, the regime change occurred, uh, the Kurds um, went to Baghdad on voluntary reunion basis under the idea of it is a new Iraq, it's a federal Iraq based on consensus that would uh, enable to, to uh, develop democracy and everybody will be partners and uh, equal. And at that time, the United States was basically Viceroy Bremer was ruling Iraq. We had um, concerns from some of the regional powers and they were reluctant to interfere in the internal Iraqi affairs because Iraq, uh, United States might was in Iraq. As we were progressing to the elections and the idea of federalism was beginning to, uh, to be accepted, um, the Shiite part of Iraq felt that it's a golden opportunity for them to have a region of their own. The Sunni Arabs boycotted the political process. However, they were convinced later, some of them, that they should be part of the process. But as time went by, and unfortunately, our friends from the United States prematurely left Iraq in 2011, when there was absolutely no, nothing prepared to replace their might and authority and power. And the key was handed over to others. Our shared brethren saw that, well, it's better to be prime minister of all of Iraq rather than just Basra, Najaf, and Karbala. And more and more, they moved away from the idea of federalism, undermining it, and totally ignoring the constitution which was voted by 85% of the Iraqis. As I said earlier, first, they marginalized the Sunnis, and today with the Sunni, it's the Sunni part of Iraq that is being destroyed. It's the, mostly the Sunnis who are uh, IDPs, and obviously other communities, unfortunately, it was easier to handle them, and then confronting the Kurds. So it seems that the voices in Baghdad today are asking for change of constitution. By that, they mean more central authority. Even some people are asking for presidential system rather than parliamentary system. So that means back to the era of the past, totalitarian regime. And this is not going to be acceptable. Definitely not by the Kurds. I hope all of those people who cherish freedom and their liberty should also stand together and fight it out to make sure that Iraq is not going to be the Iraq of the past, dictatorial, tyrannical regime. So we need to work closer together, and I, I, I accept your argument. I think we, we need to work harder and closer together in order to stand against these ideas that are floating around. Yeah, I, uh, my name is Jamal uh, Karabad, I'm from the Chaldean League also, and uh, Vice President of Sharandawa Country Club. Chaldean uh, uh, organization. Uh, I heard you saying that the, the 
people in Iraq are asking for uh, different type of a government. And you're saying that that will take us back to the, the different, uh, or the old style of governing over Iraq. The presidential uh, type of a government, that doesn't mean uh, the way you explained it. Uh, the United States, for example, is a presidential style of government. I mean, the people of the, uh, the country select the president. In Iraq, the parliamental style is that the people select the party, and the party select the president. So I'm kind of uh, trying to clarify your um, <clears throat> expression about the type of the government that the people of Iraq are trying to uh, demand. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we have seen very clear examples of this recently, um, the calls and efforts and measures to dismantle provisional councils. Provisional councils are elected bodies which serve the interests of every province, whether it is uh, public services, uh, health care, education, whatever. Because in the past, everything was centralized. The state, as you know, the Iraqi system was a socialist system. The state is the mentor. The state is the big brother. Everything had to be provided by the central authority. And uh, the new system required that authorities should be handed down to lower level, to provisional bases. Now the call is to take those authorities away from the provisional level back to Baghdad into the hand of a government or an individual. So, because we witnessed that under Mr. Maliki, and unfortunately it wasn't a very successful uh, experience. Um, our fear is that the more power in the hands of a central authority, um, it, it uh, prevents the development of the country. Yes, of course, on the provisional level, I'm not claiming that it is uh, corruption free, but at least the local uh, authorities would know better what is good for the villages and the communities and, and the townships within their boundaries. But getting all that authority back to Baghdad, as we have seen it since 1958 until 2003, um, it wasn't a very good example. So we fear that we are going back to the same um, kind of uh, system. Um, yes, uh, we, you may elect a president. Saddam Hussein was also elected with 95% of the votes. Um, but uh, it, it didn't mean much uh, to, to, to the process of democracy. Also, there was the National Assembly at the time. But what I'm trying to say is uh, we should uh, uh, not make the same mistakes of the past and I think the international community uh, should also help us to make sure Iraq as a successful example for Middle East. Iraq is a rich country in, in human resources, in, in natural resources. Uh, you know, the old saying was that uh, Cairo writes, Beirut prints, Baghdad reads. It's a, Iraq has a, a very educated elite uh, and uh, the, the public at large, uh, if you compare to other um, regional countries, it's, it, it was far more developed in the 40s and 50s and 60s. But unfortunately, um, from 1978-79, uh, it started to um, go backward. Um, eight years of Iran-Iraq war left the country bankrupt. It obliged uh, Iraq to invade Kuwait as a result of the 13 years of embargo from 1990-2003. So all of this have had a negative impact and that's why I'm trying to say we should not try to make the same mistakes as of those who've done in the past. So you believe that Kurdistan wants to have an election <coughs> that they will elect a party first and then the party uh, create their coalition to, to uh, create the government and the president? Uh, uh, I don't think we are, uh, we, have, we are the ones who have invented that system. I mean, it's the same what you have in the United Kingdom and most of European well, countries. The system is failing in Iraq. And you see how that coalition of parties are not really for the benefit of the people. It is for benefit of their party. And, uh, like in the United States, they, they, when you elect a president from a certain party or other party, that doesn't mean that he has to, uh, comes, the party comes first and then you create a... The government, the, the president, president so if, if president, you're identifying that the mm. method is by the presidential method is the uh, method of the Saddam Hussein, but that's not really the, the the truth here because the way of the elections 
is you elect the president, not elect the party. Mm -hmm. And then the party elect the But who, who would be the candidate for president? I mean, he's not going to come out from, from Mars or anywhere. I mean, he's going to be a member of a party. I mean, I, I, that's the problem. Uh, in, in Iraq, you, you have to agree on an individual, and that person could I'm be... I'm to argue, yeah. just, I'm just trying to give my point of view. Sure, of course. Your position from Kurdistan government, that they would like to have the party, uh, electing the party, and then the government would be established instead of the people the in Iraq. The government, yeah. Okay. The, government, the government can be formed as a result of the winning party, as they say, may the best man win. Whoever serves the people better, they should be elected. But uh, of course, there are many loopholes, I agree. In the electoral system, we have many problems. There are people who have been elected into the parliament with, want to know the position yeah, the with, with, with 2,000 votes, who are members of parliament in Baghdad with 2,000 votes. So the system has to change, I agree, the electoral system. But uh, electing uh, a government uh, will definitely will be as a result of the winning party Thank or a coalition. لكوردستان لخو هالصاول بول مونا لبني زور ساينات هي الجولة الشعار اللي تعاش عند سر رجا سر شكان ده أنا أقول طبعا الله أكبر لسر رجا يجي كان بني لا رجا اسمه كوليو كابس بس بيشر مثل لبير ما هو جولة قد هاي شيء جولة لو أنا لسليمان زيادة شبيه ولكنها أتوانن زيادة كان بو دانشتواني كردستان لك بو آوار كان كريستيانا كان بو كيه شقلاوة كويا سليماني عنكاوة سباس لك سوري yeah, The question was about the concern of yeah. re-emergence of uh, ISIS um, I agree uh, ISIS has been able to regroup itself uh, the sleeper cells are not uh, awakening they, are, they have already woken up and unfortunately, um, as I said in 2017, when uh, the Iraqi army was facing some, there were some confrontations with the uh, Peshmerga forces. Peshmerga forces withdrew from certain areas, but also the Iraqi army stayed at certain point. So there is a vacuum from the border with Syria right up to the border with Iran, in depth of 20 to 30 kilometers in places. Within that region, ISIS has been able to re-emerge and they are putting a lot of pressure on the local community and they are actually conducting uh, terrorist activities in that area on almost daily basis. Um, so um, the front line, let's say if I can say it, um, of Kurdistan has been strengthened. So there hasn't been any penetration of ISIS, but of course, um, you know, a single terrorist can easily use um, country roads, uh, remote uh, access, but so far uh, there hasn't been any such uh, kind of operation uh, within the KRG administrative area. Um, measures are taken, there is a, a, a degree of joint cooperation between Erbil and Baghdad on intelligence and to a degree with the coalition partners uh, on several occasions there has been joint operation against known targets of ISIS and they were successful. But of course, we are talking about uh, 15, 20,000 uh, ISIS militants between Syria and Iraq. They make an uh, easily rule group, uh, and, and particularly with the situation in Syria and with, with um, uh, the camps that accommodates the families of ISIS, and uh, unfortunately, um, the foreign fighters and their families are not uh, being taken back by uh, their countries, by their 
uh, you know, being nationals of different countries. Um, 70,000 people living in a whole camp. Uh, half of them are Iraqis, um, women and children. And as time goes by, there has to be a much more international effort to handle that <coughs> camp and other camps because it will be a big headache for future. There are many uh, youngsters growing up there with um, they, they will be ide ideal candidates to be recruited in future by the terrorist organizations. So there has to be a solution for that, but in parallel to that, there has to be more exerted effort by Baghdad, Erbil and coalition in order to prevent re-emergence of ISIS at all cost. Um, the other question you asked about, uh, KRG has provided um, all the help that they, they could do for the uh, IDPs, Christian IDPs, but uh, whether the same assistance will be provided for the local Christians who actually live in Erbil, Koysanjak, uh, Shaklawa. Um, Ankawa, well, Ankawa is, uh, is kind of it's, it's kind of a Vatican now. <laughs> it has self-rule. Uh, but uh, to be honest, um, I don't know whether this might sound a kind of a cliche answer, but uh, the IDPs, okay, we they've come from their uh, places of origin, but we still consider them as part of our society and community. But the ones living in Ankawa, in Shaklao, in Koisinjak, in Zaho, Dohok, and Suleimania, all the places, they are part of the local community. I mean, in terms of job opportunity, in terms of uh, services, there is no discrimination. I can say it without any hesitation. But uh, with, with more people that, who have migrated, obviously in terms of capabilities and means, um, probably the, the um, resources uh, or at least the uh, expertise of some of these people who can take up posts in government has become more limited because unfortunately many of the professionals have left the country and that's what I was saying that migration is not an answer I think they should stay there and stick it out through thick and thin together but uh, in terms of whatever um, you know we have a saying in Kurdish if we have a bread we'll cut it in half we share it and uh, if, if there are anything specific that you want to let me know, I will be more than happy to listen. Thank you. Thank you. How does the KRG and the administration in Iraq, do they have any suggestion for the government? حدثت عن حقوق الإنسان، so حدث حقوق الإنسان فشيء مهم بالنسبة لمنطقة العراق تركيا إيران سوريا هل حقوق الإنسان تتحقق فقط حسب مفهوم أردوغان بابتعاد قوات قسم ثلاثين ميل عن عن الحدود هل هذا هو مفهوم حقوق الإنسان؟ Well, thank you very much. I think uh, I did say that we have a great deal of support and sympathy for the demonstrators and uh, their le demands are legitimate uh, publicly, openly. Uh, the KRG has made uh, statements in support of the demonstrators' <coughs> demands and the government is obliged to meet those demands. But at the same time, it has been said that demonstrators should, uh, should be kept in, in peace and away from violence and chaos and security forces also refrain from using any violence. Um, there, there were delegations from various provinces coming to uh, Kurdistan and meeting with uh, the leaders there uh, to share their grievances and uh, to listen to them so that their messages would be um, sent to Baghdad. And only two days ago, uh, three days ago, our <coughs> president was in Baghdad specifically to meet Mr. Adel Abdel Mahdi, President Saleh, and the Speaker of the Parliament, Halbusi, in order to talk about these issues amongst other issues and to uh, also have an open support for the government that uh, should be uh, assisted and it should be, uh, the political process should uh, continue as it is. Uh, and uh, hopefully with elections um, that, that uh, may resolve some of the uh, problems. In, uh, in, in terms of uh, what you mentioned regarding human rights, I think um, our understanding 
for those who want to understand human rights, we know what it's all about and the values and the principles. But of course, uh, what, what's happening in Syria, the incursion that has occurred by Turkey, of course it's of great concern to us. But what is happening worse than that are the proxies like Ahrar al-Sham and Jabhat al-Nusra and Jaysh al-Muhammad and uh, different names. Really they are extension of Al-Qaeda. And they are spearheading the attack. The example that they left in Afrin is not a good one. Killing people, pillaging, looting, and in, in some of those other towns, uh, in Syriakani and uh, Grespi and these places, more or less the same has happened. And we have expressed that concern, and directly with Turkey, with, uh, uh, with, with uh, uh, the, the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad, and also uh, the others that we met. And in the, this, as of tomorrow, when I'm in Washington, I also bring up these issues with uh, the people that I will meet. Uh, of course, there has been violations, unfortunately. And uh, I hope uh, in the last visit of President Erdogan to Washington, uh, he has been reminded of the concerns by Washington because uh, I believe uh, uh, they can say more to Ankara and probably more leverage over Ankara than we and others do. We have time for maybe a, just a, maybe eight to ten minutes. If we want to start here, we'll just finish with this side. Please. I want to ask my question. Uh, خیراتنا جناب دای وزیر کم نوامبر فرهاده از دانشجوی میشکن و تا اندک بحث آبوری بازرگانی کرد جناب دای رضیار آمد دسر آبوری و بازرگانی و کارساز سان به خریم خودستان دناف جه گوتی دایه گلک باشتر هش در دو رو خود چهر یه جوالی بازرگانی لازه دیمه خواسی حمود شدارده آیا و قانون اک هیر and the question was about business and investment and the business environment in Kurdistan. Uh, the answer is uh, we believe in a free market economy. Um, we have encouraged um, to go in that direction and to uh, have uh, encouraged the entrepreneurship, uh, private sector, and much of what you see in Kurdistan is actually done by private sector. Billions of dollars have been invested all from private sector. Yes, the infrastructure, roads, hospitals, uh, education, uh, these are responsibility of the government. They've been doing that for the last 10, 15 years. But uh, the, 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 much of the development in conjunction with the <coughs> plans and projects of the government, uh, private sector has been instrumental in developing our economy. Um, I give you an example, like the electricity that uh, we have in our households is produced by private sector. The uh, power stations are owned by private sector. Um, the uh, tens of billions of dollars have been spent by the oil companies <coughs> and energy companies, uh, foreign ones in particular, uh, to explore, to develop, and to export uh, the oil that we uh, are actually producing, including the natural gas right now. So uh, basically, yes, we, we fully support uh, uh, free market economy. However, we, have, uh, we are still hostage to some of the old laws. Uh, some have been changed. We have uh, a law of uh, investment of 2006, which uh, was very good for its time, but it needs to be revised, uh, and it will be in the process of being revised very soon, uh, which is very attractive, actually. It provides incentives to foreign investors in terms of uh, tax exemption, uh, liquidity transfer, ownership, and so on. So uh, we have come uh, a long way, but we still believe that we can do more in order to encourage foreign investors uh, to, to come and invest in our country. Thank you. Okay, from the back, we'll have time for two more. That's okay, sir. Can you hear? Let me get this. Uh, Hello. Uh, I'm
القوة الغيب مما يجري في بغداد وإذا سألت أبو حاسب الثورة هل حكومته تستعد تستعد للتضحية ببعض وفقية من أجل الشعب العراقي؟ So was the position of the Kurdistan government was not really bad. It is unaware the Kurdistan government ready to sacrifice by some of their rights to the help of the Iraqi people. And thank you. Thank you. Um, the position, I think I've said it clearly, but I would be more than happy to say it again. Uh, we are extremely saddened by what's happening in the rest of Iraq because it's really loss of lives of Iraqis. Um, it's, it's something saddens all of us, should sadden us all of us. I think the Iraqis as a whole deserve a better life. It's a rich country and, um, you know, with 1.2 trillion dollars for the last 14 years has been the income of the Iraqi government. Can you imagine what could have been done with that amount of money? Uh, to, to develop the country, the infrastructure, the services. Unfortunately, a small fraction of that has been spent and the rest, well, God knows what has happened to it. So really, uh, we, we uh, feel for the Iraqi people as a whole and whatever happens in the center and south will have an impact on us because we are living in the same country and God forbid if the worst comes to worse, at least there will be another million or so people coming to us. So that's going to be creating more problem for us. Not in the sense that their coming is a problem for us in terms of financial uh, situation and crisis, it will be. But otherwise, we will certainly have the open door policy. Uh, and uh, uh, our advice to Baghdad has been that they should meet these demands, but also an opportunity should be given to the government because the government has been there for a year only. Uh, some of the issues um, will take some time, you know, if nothing has been done in the last 15 years, don't expect that you can overcome with a magic wand to overcome the problems in a matter of uh, a month or two. So it will take some time, but there has to be a clear uh, agenda, there has to be a vision. That's what's been lacking in Iraq, no vision. Uh, we need a vision where to go. We need to have a goal, aim, and you need uh, the third leg of the table, let's say the uh, tripod, is, is a strategy uh, to get you there, uh, the second leg. The third leg is the means and the tools, and uh, unfortunately sometimes we have two, we don't have the third one, and we go around the vicious circle. Uh, as far as uh, sacrifices, I think um, every human life is precious. Uh, and at a time when, uh, in 2006 and 7, when there were major problems in Baghdad between the Sunni and Shia community, it was the Peshmerga forces who went to Baghdad to act as a buffer zone, a buffer uh, security line between the two and to segregate them and to make sure that uh, there will be no conflict. And some Peshmergas lost their lives as a result of that. So we are ready to help out. And uh, even the talks of constitutional amendment, um, if the constitution amendment improves the lives of the Iraqi people, uh, we are for it. But the, the question is that uh, which part of the constitution has prevented um, services to the Iraqis? Uh, is there a constitutional article which uh, stops the government to provide electricity? So really the problem is not with the constitution, it's mismanagement. But anything that brings stability, security, prosperity uh, to the rest of Iraq, uh, we have helped in the past and uh, I believe we can help again in future. We'll take this uh, final question. Mohamed Jambas from Reuters and freelancer for today. Uh, my question is, if the Iraqi central government has resigned, how is it going to affect on the uh, situation in the carriage? We hope that the present government will not resign because uh, the past experience tells us it takes six months to 12 months to form a new government. Mr. Adel Abdul Mahdi was a compromise candidate after a lot of bickering between the political parties to form a government. So uh, if we're gonna uh, have a, uh, a government, a caretaker government, 
it will take a longer time to form another government with uh, an accepted prime minister by everybody. Uh, but what is important is to make sure that the present government prevails, but it also has to take measures in order to correct the wrongdoings of the past uh, and uh, to uh, give that assurance to the public at large that this government is there for the service and the good of the people. Uh, we hope it will not come, come to that, but if it does, I think we all have to work e that extra harder to form a government as quickly as possible. Thank you, so I want to just recognize our Buna, you wanna? And I just apologize, they have to catch a plane, that's why we're being quick. So we really only have two minutes. Hopefully we can get these last ones in and we gotta get going. If I had an answer to that question, probably I would be <laughs> I would be I would be in great deal demand by various capitals. بصراحة الوضع العراق يعني اللي نعيش فيه وضع ما يبقي العراقيين يعني العراقيين محتاجون الاستقرار والازدهار فهو الحل الأسهل والأهون هو تمسك بوحدة العراق وحل المشكلة بين العراقيين طبعا هذه المحاصصة المحاصصة اللي موجودة في العراق هو المشكلة الأساسية والطائفية والمذهبية والعرقية العراق يحتاج إلى إدارة ذاتية قوية ولكن ليس ديكتاتورية المفهوم الديمقراطية بالعراق نحن فاهمين أو معظم العراقيين فاهمين الديمقراطية بشكل خطأ الديمقراطية ليس يعني فوضى الديمقراطية هو احترام الرأي الآخر وأحيانا هذه الاحترام ليس له تواجد ومنه أقوى ويسيطر على الوضع والأخوة الشيعين طبعا هم كانوا ما كانوا جزء من عملية سياسية في العراق سابقا وفي الوقت الحاضر شافوا فرصة بأنه عندهم مجال يسيطرون على الوضع ومع الأسف التوجهات أو الفكرة اللي قدموا أو النماذج اللي قدموا مو نماذج صحيحة والصحية فبالنسبة للمناطق المنكوبة إذا تشوف مثلا موصل موصل أيضا منكوبة ومن سنجار إلى مندلي المناطق كلها منكوبة ومعظم هذه المناطق مناطق السنية واللي عايشين خارج المناطق أو في داخل العراق أو خارج العراق معظمهم السنين واللي عايشين بالمخيمات كذلك هم من أهل السنة وأربعين بالمئة أو أكثر من الأطفال السنة هسا ما مسجلين بأي نظام تربوي فهذا راح يخلق الجيل الجديد جاهل و راح يكون 
لهم يعني الاجواء مناسبه لتجنيد تجنيدهم من قبل المتطرفين. فهاي الدواره والحلقه راح تستمر مع الاسف، فالعراق يحتاج الى استقرار سياسي لمده خمس الى عشر سنين مثل ما قلت ليس ديكتاتوريه ولكن نوعا من الحريه الديمقراطيه والكفاءه موجوده ولكن احيانا المحسوبيه آه المحسوبيه هو 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 آه يكون الشرط الاساسي لاداره الدوله. اوكي وي غير اند وذ مستر جاك دان. انا بس وليد جاك دان خلي احكي بالعربي حتى بس وليد اللي دا يحدث بالعراق فور منستر قلوب العراقيين خارج العراق اليوم محصوره لانه دا يشوفون الشعب العراقي بكل اطيافه بكل اطيافه دا يخرج ودا ينادي لوقف الفساد الاقتصادي الاجتماعي الثقافي ابريدنج الان وقف التدخل الايراني والنهب الايراني لكل لكل ثورات العراق. You mentioned 1.2 trillion since 2003 till now. 90% percent من عليها راحت يا أما لجيوب ال ال الأحزاب ال 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 الدينية اللي يقول الشيعية الدينية والقسم الأكبر راح لإيران. هاليوم العراق هاليوم العراق إنتاجاته وكل شيء وقفت. لسبب واحد انه ايران خربت العراق حتى تنهب فلوس العراق. وانتم قاسيتهم من ايران ولحد الان تقاسون من ايران من التدخل الايراني في شؤون الشعب العراقي وفي كل مؤسسات الشعب العراقي. فنطلب من عندكم انتم شو عندكم ثوره وثرتوا وحصلتوا على مطالبكم وحصلتوا على الاستقرار والديمقراطيه نطلب من عندكم مسانده هذا يعني انت جزء من الشعب العراقي يكرس سي انه اكو سنه واكو شيعه انت كل الشعب العراقي هاليوم السنه والشيعه كلهم دا يطلعون هاليوم الشيعه دا يطلعون دا يثورون ضد شيعه ايران لانه قم مسيطره على كل شيء موجود بالعراق والحكومه الموجوده بالعراق هي حكومه ضعيفه تابعه لايران يسسد يا انت يجسد عبد المهدي عبد المهدي موجود من تو اوتري لحد الان ايش سوى؟ نظيك أنا ما راح يسوي أنيثينغ والأحزاب الشيعية المسيطرة اللي تدبوك أموال العراق وإذا تعطي القسم الكبير لإيران راح يكون موجود أو باقي إذا أنتم ما ساندتوا هالثورة اللي هي لجميع أبناء الشعب العراقي. شكرا. One other question too. Last one. This is it. They missed their plane. We're not going to have any help back home, guys. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming here. We are honored that you come in here and uh, start your uh, visit in Detroit. Uh, I have a question about the situation that happened in Syria. It's still one part of our Kurdish nation. And uh, a lot of these uh, experiences that happened in Iraq, in Turkey, in Iran, and as KRG, a stable uh, entity that I'm proud to, to be you guys are in this uh, situation. What are the measures that we have to do to stop this massacre that happened like every five years, six years? We have to have a mechanism. We have to have a dialogue with all part of the Kurdish nation. Get together, get their ideas, and come with a resolution, and bring it to all the Kurdish uh, people who are uh, there, and then go to the allies. Let's not rely only on the United States as an ally. We need to have a lot of allies because we, they, they look for uh, opportunity, economical opportunity in Iraq. Uh, as you know, they have a lot of consulate in, in, in uh, KRG, and they look down the line, you know, their vision. So please, what are those measures that the KRG is looking to? Because this is our nation. We cannot just look at Iraq, we have to look at our whole nation. Thanks. Well, first of all, uh, as I said, I mean, in terms of uh, um, humanity, I think we are all God's creation. So 
the nations who live together, uh, they are destined to live together. So I think uh, I've said that and uh, we have set a, a reasonably good example. We can do better, but certainly we, we are doing reasonably well. But uh, unfortunately, uh, you touched on, on, the, on the, the point, um, today international policy and politics is led by interests. As they say, there is no uh, permanent friend and there is no permanent enemy, there is permanent interest. So some of these countries, they have interests, whether it's in the energy, whether it is in the stability of the area, economical development, selling more armaments. So each country has a vested interest, whether they are regional or global powers. Um, what is important for us is to try to uh, make sure that some of our interests um, fall in line with these powers. Uh, and let's not forget that Kurdistan is not an independent entity where it's respected, where it's um, uh, protected by international laws and norms and regulations. We are part of Iraq and what happened in 2017 when the people of Kurdistan uh, voted for independence referendum and the closest of our friends and allies turned their back on us and Baghdad was moving against Kurdistan militarily. So that is a very close and not a so distant uh, example that politics are run by interests. It was not in the interest of those countries to see an independent Kurdistan, even though there was no intention of declaration of an independent Kurdistan. It was just merely expressing a wish and, and uh, it was not binding as such. But uh, in terms of uh, the issue that you mentioned about the Kurds, of course we have uh, uh, affinity to, to the Kurds, be it in Syria, Turkey or Iran. But at the same time, we believe in non-intervention policy of the internal affairs of those countries. Yes, Kurdistan has been divided after the First World War against their will. Uh, there was a promise of an independent uh, uh, state. It never happened. But there is a reality on the ground. We have to be pragmatic. The issue of the Kurds in those countries has to be resolved peacefully, democratically, um, like all nations, not only Kurds. In Turkey you have 26 different ethnic groups of various sizes. I think every nation there should enjoy their rights. In Iran the same and in Syria. In Syria until very recently, even until today, the Kurds are not entitled to citizenship. And what used to be known in 1961-62, the Hizam al-Arabi, along the border with Syria and, and Iraq and Turkey, Kurdish uh, families and tribes were moved out and it was settled by uh, the Arab tribes. So this Arabization has been there and has been also in other disputed territories in Iraqi Kurdistan. So what I'm trying to say is that, of course, we have affinity and we feel for their sufferings. What's happening in, in uh, Afrin and in Kobani and, and other uh, towns today, but uh, there has to be a much more comprehensive. It is not just the plan of KRG because KRG is uh, resources in every aspect uh, and leverage is limited. Uh, here we have big powers, we have Russia, we have United States, we have Turkey, we have Iran, we have uh, Europeans, everybody's involved in, in Syria. And with all these powers, all with different agendas, all with different players, each one supporting different groups, uh, obviously it becomes very messy. And it seems that the prime interest is not for the stability, but it's to serve the interests of those countries in that region. And uh, to be honest, against that policy, all that we can do is to lobby them, talk to them, and try to uh, bring some sense to this uh, situation. And uh, that's what I try to do in my week in, in, in Washington. Thank you. Well, let's give the delegation a round of applause. Thank you, sir.